Hey, YouTube. Uh, I'm beginning to explore C Sharp. And by beginning to explore, I literally looked at a tutorial on YouTube Saturday morning. And then I figured the best way to kind of learn it is to start tackling uh, problems using it. So I found this leak code problem, uh, which is a two sum problem. I may have covered this one in Python. Um, anyway, so, you know, this leak code site, I have no affiliation with them, but it's a pretty cool site. Uh, you know, as a former math teacher, I kind of like that they have these difficult problems and, and that kind of thing. And for people who are trying to get a job in the tech industry, they do want to practice these types of problems because certain interviews, not all of them, but uh, certain interviews would, you know, that you would have to pass these kind of questions, like if you're trying to get into a big tech company. Okay. So anyways, um, the premise behind this two sum problem is that you're given an array of integers and a target. Okay, so in this first example, and I think the best way to kind of figure it out is look at the examples. So you're given this array 2, 7, 11, 15, and a target of 9. Okay, and the output is 0 and 1 because this first number in the array, 2, and the second number in the array, 7, adds up to 9. Now, if you know something about programming with an array, the index starts at index 0. So the first number would be at index 0, second number would be at index 1. So you know, we take these two numbers, add them up, okay, and get, uh, you know, and we would get nine from two and seven, so the indices would be zero and one, okay? So the way I'm tackling this now, I, again, I started looking at C-sharp Saturday morning, so I'm no way an expert. Uh, I don't think my answer would be uh, accepted just yet. This is basically just to give you kind of a, a look at um, what, you know, how to get started in C-sharp and maybe how to start learning a little bit. I'm putting all my stuff in the main. That's probably not best practices. I probably want to put it in a separate class like they have here, but I'm going through my thought process and I thought it might be interesting for some of you who are interested in programming and the logic behind solving this problem. And just people like me who are just kind of getting into C-sharp. Now, if you're watching this and you're a C-sharp expert and you see that uh, I'm making some things that some errors and stuff like that please uh leave comments in the suggestions i'm open to uh open to feedback of course um yeah so um anyways so let's let's get started with that so now for those of you who are total totally never done uh c sharp before the c sharp.net the best way to get started is to just google.net in my opinion okay so if we google.net we see net uh, free cross-platform open source. This is .net.microsoft.com. Okay, so I'm going to go here and I'm going to click on get started. Okay, and I want to download and install. Okay, so I'm going to go here and I want to install the .net uh, SDK, which is software development kit. Okay, so I'm going to click on that. That's going to load up and it, it senses that I'm using a Chromebook here. So it says install.net on Linux. So I'm going to scroll on down. Now, Linux with their beta install, you still install Debian 10. So I'm going to go down here and click on that. Okay. And then to install it, I basically have to copy this here. So I copy it, it'll turn green. Uh, but again, I've, I've done this already, so I'm not going to actually do it. But I copy that. And so then I would bring up my terminal. And in my root directory, I would paste that in. And then I would run those commands. This is a few commands. And then after that, I would copy this. You get that green check mark. And again, pull up my root directory and run those commands. And that's it. Uh, .NET is installed. OK, so uh, now that .NET is installed, I'm going to just I have uh, a folder called .NET. So I'm going to CD into .NET. And then I'm going to create another folder, but I'm going to use uh, .NET to do it. And I'm going to create a console application. This isn't like a web application yet or anything like that. There's a bunch of different ones you can do. But I'm just going to type .NET new console, then dash O for output. And then I want to name the folder. So let's name it uh, Tucson, because that's the problem we're trying to find, uh, solve. I'm going to hit Enter, and that's going to create the project for me. And it says it was created successfully. 
And I'm going to CD into Tucson. And I saw some other YouTubers, they just uh, you know, do an initial .NET build just to make sure everything's kind of running because it's going to give you like a base project that just says hello world. And then we're going to start from there. Okay. All right. So we're not getting any warnings, not getting any errors because it's the base project. Good. All right. So now that I'm in this folder, I'm going to open up my text editor of choice uh, in this folder. So whatever you're using, I'm going to be using NeoVim Qt, which is a graphical version of NeoVim, uh, a GUI, if you will. All right. So I'm going to click on that. That's going to open up. Uh, hopefully everything opened up. Okay, with that. And now, as you see from uh, my new config, config, I had this folder on the uh, right side over here. I decided to move it back to the left. Anyway, so I'm not going to worry about this bin or this object. I'm just going to go to program.cs, C sharp, right? And they give me a base program. Okay, and you'll see that you have this console.writeline. That's kind of like print in, say, Python. Um, you know, so that's uh, so how you how you output something. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna have that, and uh, in that I'm gonna actually delete this line. So let's delete that, and then you'll see that in uh, C programs you have this kind of syntax here with the the way the brackets are. They're a little different than say something like JavaScript or or definitely certainly different than Python. Uh, so what I'm going to first create is the uh, array of numbers that they gave me in the particular problem. So in the particular problem, the first example had an array. And the way we do that is we type int, integer array, uh, and these uh, opening and closing square brackets, and then the name of the array. So I'm going to call it nums, and then the curly braces, and then we'll put in our numbers. So 2, 7, 11 and 15 okay so that's the arrays that they are passing in we also have an integer target and i'm going to put that in as well so integer so i type int and then i'm just going to name a target and that was nine in the first example so we're going to go through the first example i'll run that program and then um from there i'll uh i'll i'll test other examples Okay, uh, and then I'm going to just declare another integer, call that num1, and we'll also declare another integer, and I'm going to call that num2, though actually let me wait on that, I don't know that I'm going to need that just yet. Uh, I'm going to declare another integer, and I'm going to call that difference. Okay, and then... Uh, I'm going to have a Boolean, and the way I declare that is bool, and I'm going to call this breaker, and I'm going to set that equal to false for right now. And okay, so now I'm going to start a for loop where I go through this array, okay? And so I do a for loop kind of like, like any other for loop, so it's four. Uh, we'll start with declaring the integer i, which we're going to in, use to increment through. So integer i, that's going to equal zero. Uh, then I'm going to put a semicolon. Then I'm going to say i while this for loop is going to run while i is less than the nums dot. And then you have to do capital length. So the length of the num array. Uh, and then I'm going to increment i by doing i plus plus. And actually, while we're doing this video, this is a little small. So let me see if I see if I can oh yeah okay so I'm gonna jack up the font here a bit so you can see it okay so there we go uh, and actually I don't need that I'm going to do open and closing curly brackets and uh, then we'll start with the next line and we'll say num1 equals uh, nums at index i I want to end all of our statements with a semicolon. And then we're going to say the difference is equal to the target minus num1. OK. Uh, now we're going to start another for loop inside this for loop. So let me bring this up here for a moment. So this in this for loop, 
uh, we're going to say for, and I'm going to choose a different integer. We're going to call it x for x equals zero. When x is less than the num's length, and I'll explain this in a moment. Uh, oh, and and uh, we're going to say not breaker. So the breaker is false. Um, and then we're going to increment x. Okay, so while those conditions are happening, so while x is less than the length of the number array, and while this breaker boolean is false, um, we're going to continue to run this for loop. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So in here, we're going to say if the difference uh, equals the um, array value at the index x uh, and i does not equal x. So while those are true, oops, I messed up there. What am I doing? Sorry about that. Um, okay, uh, so we're going to we're going to write this output. So this is how I'm going to return it. Uh, now, again, this is not using a method yet in C sharp, which is kind of like a function. Um, correct me if I'm, I'm wrong on that. But uh, so we're just going to write out uh, the output. I'm going to say output equals these two numbers. Now, we're not in, in the leak code example. They're obviously wanting you to return the array. So like I said, this is not a complete example yet, but this is just kind of showing you. Uh, the thought process behind it and, and just delving a little bit into C sharp. Okay, so what I'm going to say is console.writeline, and I have to have capital W, capital L, and I'm going to say output. This is how I'm doing it output, and I just did an arrow. You, you can do anything you want, you could do a dash, or whatever. I, I just think it looks cool. So the output is, and then opening square bracket, and then we're going to uh, uh, concatenate a little bit here. Um, so I'm going to do, let's see, plus I plus, now my font is jacked up on this, so it's going to wrap around, but um, plus, then we'll do quotes, and we'll do space there. And then plus X, and then the another quotes just with the closing brackets like that. Actually, we, we did get it in. Okay, cool. So, all right. So we got console.writeline, and that's going to give us the output. Okay. And uh, then we're going to say breaker is true. Okay. And then we're going to break out of this loop when that happens. Okay, so we'll break out of this for loop. But then the breaker here uh, is going to not let us go back into the for loop. Okay, uh, and I'm going to save it. Okay, and then I've got a little shortcut in my init.vim right now that I wrote since the last video I made, because I made it Friday and I don't my uh, new config, but it allows me to do control one. And then that runs the command, the, the bash command, the shell command, uh, dot net build. And I've got one error. Okay. And let's take a look. So we're an error in line 22. There is a comma expected. Okay. So let's take a look at that. So go up to line 22. Uh, <laughs> It was at 73. It says there is a, oh, ah, okay. So I have to put plus here. Okay, so that was the error. All right, so let's save it again. I'm going to build it again.
All right, it's going to go through the build process. And again, I mapped control one to do that. You can do whatever you want, or you could just type in uh, .NET build in your terminal. Okay, so we have zero warnings, zero errors. Okay, that's good. All right, so now I'm going to run it. I think I have mapped control R to run it. So, uh, yep. Okay, so now it's going to run um, with those examples. And we should get zero, 01. So our output is zero, 01. So, so far it's working. All right, so let's exit out of this terminal here and let's go up here and just uh, do some of the other examples they have. So let's pull up that. Uh, so that was the first example. Second example was 324 target of six. Okay. Three, two, four, target of six. I'm going to save it and then run it or build it rather. So we're going to build it again. It's going to take a moment to build, uh, especially this is a lower end uh, machine. Um, okay, so we got zero warnings. That's always good. And now we'll run it. Uh, and again, I mapped control R to, to go open a terminal and say .NET run. Okay, and we get one and two, which if we look, we should be getting one and two. Okay, let's look at their last example, which is three and three, target's still six, we should get zero and one. Okay, save it, build it. And I, once, once, once we're done testing this, um, I'll go show you my uh, init file um, and just go through the how I am running it with con Control One and Control R. All right, so no errors. Good. Let's run it. Okay, it's going to take a moment to run. We should get, I believe, uh, yeah, zero and one. Okay, so that works. Again, that's not. It's not quite what they want just yet, but again, I just started exploring C Sharp Saturday morning. It's Monday morning now, so yeah, I'm just starting to tackle this. Okay, so let me show you how um, I set this up. So if anyone's wondering how I'm getting those commands nice and easy, uh, so let's go to my config and let's go down to here. And uh, okay, so C Sharp files. Uh, so this is for the build, and I should mark this for build in my comments. Okay, so in here, um, we, we say auto command file type CS for C sharp, and I'm mapping it in, in insert mode and in normal mode, so IMAP and NMAP, uh, control one. And so in both those modes, we're gonna make sure we're in normal mode. We're gonna hit escape and then colon, I probably don't need the escape in normal mode. And then, so colon brings me down and then I can run uh, a shell command with exclamation and then the command. So exclamation dot net build and then CR is um, a return. So it hits return and it runs command. And then the dot net run, I, again, I did IMAP and NMAP for insert and normal mode and mapped it to control R. And then from there I have opening a terminal, I have map to control T. So I have control T and then .NET run and then return. Okay. So that made it a little bit easier to uh, work with uh, .NET files. So anyways, uh, again, I just started .NET, but I wanted to share this with you. I hope you found this video uh, enjoyable and maybe learned something. And if you have any suggestions in my .NET journey, please leave comments in the comments below. Uh, and if you like the video, please like and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications as it really helps the channel grow. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. And here comes the awkward part where I'm trying to turn off Screencastify.